Hi everyone, my name is Riley. I'm a QA specialist on the desktop team here at Avenza, and today I'll be showcasing a new exciting feature that you can expect to see in our upcoming release of Map Publisher 11.2. That feature is Vector Based Maps. The Vector Based Maps tool allows you to import auto styled contextual data to all of your map projects. The tool imports georeference vector data from an online map server called MapTiler. And the imported data is then auto-styled based on the determined zoom level and the attribute information within the data. We provide a basic style by default, but this tool allows you to fully customize the layer styling and save templates for sharing or for future use. The Vector Base Maps import tool will determine an appropriate zoom level from 1 to 15 based on the input information provided through two different methods. So the first method requires no existing data and allows you to specify the area you wish to import by inputting uh, WGS84 coordinates or by selecting on an online map. The zoom level is then determined based on your selected area and your artboard size. The second method requires a map view containing at least one map layer and the extent and scale of that map view is then used to determine the zoom level. So let's take a look at the Vector Base Maps tool in action. In this first example, I'll be creating a map to display some recorded hiking and paddling tracks from a past camping trip of mine. Sometimes in mapping projects, we have all of our important data sets, but when it comes to putting together a map, we need some surrounding context such as land use or water bodies, and the Vector Base Maps tool is a quick solution to this problem. So I'm starting my project with this template document containing a blank artboard and a map theme that I've set up for my personal tracks. We'll start off by bringing in the base map. The Vector Base Maps tool can be found on the data creation section of the Map Publisher toolbar. And when we click the icon, we're met with two different options. The first will open up the Vector Base Maps import dialog, and the second is the configure Vector Base Maps dialog. That's where you can create, apply, and save all of your custom styling for base map layers. We'll start on the import dialog. Currently we're using the artboard method as I have no existing data in this document. If you have multiple artboards, you'll find them listed here for selecting. And using this import method, the zoom level and number of tiles at the bottom here will be determined based on my selected area and my artboard size. I can make that area selection by dragging the pins on the online map or by inputting my coordinates in WGS84 here. As you can see, I've already selected my area. This is the general area where my tracks have been recorded in Algonquin Provincial Park in Ontario. The zoom level is currently 15. Um, but we do have the option to change this by plus or minus one depending on the level of detail we desire. I'll be using the basic style, uh, but we do have the option to apply our custom styles that we've saved. And on the bottom of the import dialog, you have the option to include a background layer, um, text, or point layers. The text layers will provide labels for things like places, roads, and water bodies, and the points are included in our higher zoom levels as points of interest. I'll be including all those options, and I'll go ahead and add my base map. So the import process is now retrieving tiles and opening up our basic style template to auto-style the data. And here's our base map. In this case, I've chosen an area that fits the height and width of my artboard perfectly. However, in most cases, the base map will be fitted as close to the artboard size as possible without going beyond its extent. Before I bring my own data into this project, we'll just take a look at the vector base maps result. On the map views panel, you'll see a map view called base map has been created to hold our layers. The base map layers have a slightly different icon that still indicates the feature type. And we'll take a quick look at the map view that was created. As you can see, it's just like any other map view, um, and our base map layers can be scaled, transformed, and positioned just like the regular map layers. 
Uh, you'll also notice by default the base maps are imported in WGS84 Pseudo Mercator, but they can be transformed as needed. Now I'll bring in my tracks and finish off this quick map. And on the map views panel you can see my tracks are in a different coordinate system so they've been placed in a separate map view. You can transform the base map layers just like any other layers by dragging them. In this case I'll just drag my tracks into the base map map view. As you can see my tracks have also been auto styled using my tracks map theme and it's important to note that the base map styles are separate from our regular map themes panel. Um, they exist within the configure vector base maps dialog which we'll take a look at now. Here, here you'll find all of the style sheets for base map layers and they can be edited. And within each of the listed layers you'll find the rule expression and visual properties are fully customizable. If any edits are made, I can click OK to apply them to my current base map, or I can save them to apply on import or to apply post import through this dialog. So that's the first example of using vector base maps and starting from an empty document. Now we'll go on to the second method that allows me to use the extent of my existing map view. In this example, I'll be layering a base map on this shaded relief that I created in Geographic Imager. And as you can see on the map views panel, I have a map view containing this image. And I'll be using the extent of that to import my base map. So going back to the base maps dialog, um, we are currently using the map view method. And if I had multiple map views within my document, I would uh, have them all here for selecting. And we also get some general information about our map view. This time around, I'll be using a custom style that will allow this shaded relief to show through my base map and has some slightly different colors. So I'll add my base map. And then taking a look at the layers panel, you can see the base map layers have been added beneath our existing layers. So for this, I will be dragging my shaded relief below the base map. And here you can see we've gone from a grayscale shaded relief to a great starting point for any supporting data um, with the use of the vector base maps tool. And I hope at this point I've sparked some ideas of the ways vector base maps will improve your current map making processes. And I invite you to leave any feedback or questions in the chat. Thank you so much for listening.